Welcome to Indie Beacon Radio, where creative souls can find help in marketing their creations. You can send questions for each show on Twitter using the hashtag Indie Beacon. Now sit back and enjoy learning about our guest for this show. Hello and welcome to today's show. We're so glad you have joined us to hear from a Texas author. I'm Lori Allen, and if this is the first time you've joined us, it's a great way to learn what other authors are writing about, how they work, how they market, how they get those books sold, and sometimes some of their challenges and all that. Well, today we're talking to a woman named Dorothy Tinker, who is from the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex area, and Dorothy was told there was no way she could ever make a living writing, so she got a math degree. Dorothy, welcome to the program. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing, Lori? <laughs> Good. So have you done anything fun with your math degree, or is that way behind you in another lifetime? Uh, here and there. I've had an internship when I was younger, and I've actually kind of translated it into my editing these days. I use the uh, attention to detail and thoroughness from, from math in my editing. Well, that makes sense. And to run a business, authors have to make money. You probably use the math to balance your checkbook and all that, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about more fun stuff than math. Tell us uh, about your books and your anthologies. Well, I have uh, currently have three books that I've written the entire things of. Uh, the Peace of Evelyn series is my basically my pride and joy. Uh, it's about a young young woman who pretends to be a boy and travels around trying to find peace. Uh, it's a story of dragons, magic, and gods, a tangle of secrets, a quest for peace, and a struggle for her to trust others with her true self. Well, that sounds interesting. How'd you come up with that? It's been so long. It's a combination of it started with the map, and I was always kind of interested in the the gender bending, the the idea the idea of of someone pretending to be um, not quite what others uh, would make of make of their true self. Yeah, yeah. That I mean, well, and there's been so many classic stories and classic movies about that, but your yes. genre is more youth uh, fantasy. So yep. it seems like it would fit in pretty well with that. Mm-hmm. So who's the typical reader that you're going after? Um, pretty much um, pretty much anyone 16 or over that's interested in not only epic fantasy kind of things, but also diving into more spiritual aspects as well. Um, my books tend to explore both. I explore the spiritual realm as much as the physical with the mental sides of the characters and as well as gods throughout the world. Well, and let's give the titles of the books and piece of Yvonne. Is that right? Piece of Yvonne, E-V-O-N is the first book. And then gift of war is the second and lost King is the third. And right now I'm working on forgotten goddess, which is the fourth book of that particular series. Cool. So are you going to have any more in the series? Are you going to start a new series? What's your plan? plan right now is that it's going to be a five-book series. So right, like I said, right now I'm working on Forgotten Goddess. And um, it's, honestly, it's been giving me a little bit of trouble. I published Lost King in 2015. So this, this fourth book has been kind of a journey for me. Well, we were just uh, talking about how you might be able to encourage other authors who are having challenges. How are you getting through this challenge? Leaning on other writers for uh, for help. Um, I, I've, I'm really big into into getting connecting with writing communities. So I it 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 can be a struggle to do it alone. So just having the support of other writers and knowing that I'm not the only one who's having that kind of struggle uh, helps me get through it. Oh, yeah, I bet. Do you get good tips or advice when you reach out like that? Uh, tips, um, 
definitely. Um, I'm part of a community, a, a women writers community on Facebook. It's pretty large these days. Uh, it's called Creative, Creative Central, and it's yeah. one of the groups I'm really big into one of the uh, these days. I help out with editing um, an anthology that I'm actually working on. Are the writers all come from that that group actually? Cool. Well, tell us about the anthology because you did mention that that was something you were really excited about. Yes. Um, so I actually have a small press that I partner with another author on, um, and the, the press is called Balance of Seven, and we are coming out with our debut anthology called Ro- Rogues and Wildfire. Uh, it's a, a romance anthology that was inspired by a little uh, writing exercise that we had last year uh, in the month of July. And basically it was for this writing community, Creative Central, and all the ladies uh, were, were basically trying to write a short story that had a, a ranger as one of the leads in the romance. And it is coming mm. out July 31st of this year. Um, and a, we're not doing pre-orders, but we do have an email list that we are going to be um, basically nudging people when it comes out and saying, it's, it's out and it's ready to be ready to be delved into. Well, that's exciting. Now, if you want to find out more about Dorothy Tinker's books and how to get a hold of her and get on that email list, you can find her at the Texas Author site, and you can go to books.txauthors.com. Well, Dorothy, it sounds like you're doing this full time, and you don't have uh, you don't have to have a math day job to support your writing. Am I interpreting that right? Uh, at this point, pretty much, I do uh, editing to uh, as my as my day job. I do freelance well, editing, so I, I work. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I do. I do full length edit, novels. Uh, All right. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was just I was trying to get you to expound on that. Tell us more. Full length novels. Anything else? Um, I, I've, I've edited full-length novels. Um, I, I really specialize in short stories and articles. Um, you think, uh, I do a lot of anthology work. I've worked with Houston Writers Guild and Inklings Publishing with all, all of their uh, anthologies. Um, I'm actually the copywriter and, or copy editor and formatter for Inklings Publishing in Houston. Um, so all of their recent novels and anthologies I've copy edited and formatted. Um, we are uh, Houston Writers Guild is coming out with their um, their most recent anthology outside the window later this fall, and Inklings is coming out with their eclectically magical anthology later this fall as well. Wow, that sounds like it keeps you busy. Do you have trouble finding it time to write? It certainly does. Um, a little bit, yeah. I, I'm I'm still mm-hmm. I'm still in that 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 phase of trying to juggle everything. <laughs> <laughs> when you find a secret formula, will you let us all know? <laughs> I, I will certainly get the word out there. <laughs> Dorothy, what do you do to market your books? Um, I I do I do a lot of conventions. I do um I'll go to like anime conventions or literary conventions. Actually, anime conventions are my better bet. Um, it's kind of it, it kind of turns out that you know a novel is a novel concept at an anime convention so uh, mm. it kind of stands out a little bit more um yeah so, so I'll, I'll do things like anime matsuri in houston or um i've done a- anime fest up in dallas area i've even gone as far as MechaCon over in louisiana as well great do you how do you do you have a special table where you say something or make a special offer how do they how do they say oh yeah we need to read a book about this um i generally uh, i have i have kind of a design for my table and i'm like i said i'm actually in the process of uh i'm in the that process of juggling stuff so things are in in a bit of a change at the point at this point but i usually have a, a set layout for my table that's got bits and pieces from my from my books like maps um, figurines for my characters because I have uh, a dragon and two horses in my in my books that are main characters as well as the two humans. So I have figurines for each of those, and those tend to draw people in. 
because they oh that's if, cool if yeah who likes horses they they get really interested because of that if they like math so they become interested because of that cool well you know there's a quote that says a writer cannot not write and that's how you know that you have to do it and it really sounds like your life you started writing early on and they you were told mm-hmm. to, can't make a living writing but then you're back into it because you love it so much. What advice would you give to people who are told, oh, you can't do this? If it's your dream, stick with it. I mean, that's, that has been basically my entire life. Um, when I got out of college, I, I took like two years just to try and try and settle into a job. And by the end of those two years, I was like, I'm not getting any closer to my real dream and my real and writing is what I really want to do with my life. So I, I figured I thought I was settled in enough and decided to just go for what I really wanted to do. Well, good for you. Thanks for being such a, a inspiring role model on that. That's great. We are about to take a break, but Dorothy Tinker is who we're talking to tonight. And Dorothy When we come back from the break, I would like to hear any tips you have for people who do want to write in terms of having a routine or just some things that really work for you to get those words on paper. And then also, because you are copy editing, let's talk about some of the most common mistakes that you see in people's writing, people who are trying to write books. Is that a deal? All right. Sounds good. Okay. Well, we'll be back in just a few moments. Take a take the time to listen to our sponsors because they keep this show running and available at no cost to you. Thank you so much and we'll be back. Breakfield and Berkey, 2017 award-winning authors of the Enigma series techno thrillers, have released their first book in audible format. The Enigma Factor is the foundational story for the series' ongoing battles against cyber assassins using technology, today's weapon of choice. Explore the digital threats of fighting for lost identity, struggling with mutant computer viruses, or commodity market manipulation. EnigmaSeries.com reveals the intrigue and intelligence of digital combat in our 21st century. Available in paperback, ebook, and now audible format. Bourgeois Media and Consulting, a book publishing consultant where creative inspiration is realized. More at bourgeoismedia.com. Well, hello there, my friends. My name is Randy James, independent voiceover producer in the Dallas, Texas area, available to write and record a 30-second commercial, much like the one you're hearing right now. It's a great way to help increase awareness and exposure to your book title. It's easy to do. Simply call me and we'll brainstorm on a few ideas. And in a few hours, I'll whip something up and send you a digital file ready to use. Remember, call or text me, Randy James, at 214-762-1942. Do you love to read great new ebooks? Visit ebg247.com. Be the first to discover the next bestseller. At EBG247, we have the web's largest selection of great new book reads, from that amazing new fiction or nonfiction to horror, romance, and fantasy. We even have today's best children's books. That's ebg247.com. New books arrive daily, and all ebooks start at just 99 cents. If you love to read, then you'll love ebg247.com. Low prices, large selection and an easy to use website it's all only at ebg247.com living under a theocracy is tough enough but out of nowhere a secret mission threatens everything in a common soldier's life now Salvik must do all he can to protect his people and the woman he loves the gray blade by aaron ward is the first in the god swords series available at your favorite bookstore or at books.txauthors.com. Long-time developmental editor Susan Malone fosters writers' innate talents to help them become successfully published authors. Over 50 Malone-edited books have sold to traditional publishers. Her authors' books win major literary awards, reach the bestsellers list, and become films. She offers in-depth, personalized editing and coaching to turn your manuscript into a successful published book. To learn more about Susan Malone's services, please visit maloneeditorial.com. 
Welcome to Indie Beacon Radio, where creative souls can find help in marketing their creations. You can send questions for each show on Twitter using the hashtag IndieBeacon. Now sit back and enjoy learning about our guest for this show. Hi, welcome back to the program. I'm your host for today, Alan. We're so glad that you're with us getting to know Dorothy Tinker better. She's a Texas author who has written already three books. She's on her fourth for young people who like epic fantasy. She's also working on some anthologies, and she has her own copy editing business. Dorothy, welcome back. And before the break, we said, hey, what kind of tips do you have for people who want to get books published, people who want to be a writer like you? What, what advice would you give them? So I'm actually going to borrow some advice from another, uh, another writer that I, that I know. Um, as, she, as she says, try and just write five minutes a day. Uh, even, even just that can get you moving forward. And I'm, pull, I'm, I'm borrowing that from the person who started Creative Central, Debbie Burns. Um, so we get, a lot of, we get a lot of good tips in there. Um, for me, part of the struggle is knowing your world, uh, exploring it well enough, getting to know your characters. And I'm, I'm, big, I'm a big world, build, world builder, so I'm always trying to learn more about my world in order to be able to get it into my story. Well, that sounds interesting. So it's my, maybe the equivalent of research for another type of author, just having enough time to do the research and the writing. Yes, and and it's amazing how much you do, how much research you do, even for a fantasy story. <laughs> There's a reason I don't write <laughs> real world. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about your copy editing business first. If anybody's interested in that, how do they get in touch with you? Um, me, I uh, can be found on my website, or at least my my company's website, uh, balanceof7.com, uh, and that's the seven spelled out. Um, that's my small press, and um, we have everything there from the the anthologies and the DT, the D Tinker editing, which is my what I call my editing business uh, information there as well. And by the way, those of you who are listening, if you would like to, we encourage you to buy as many books as you can from independent authors. Go to books.txauthors.com and look up Dorothy Tinker to get her books and find out a little bit more about her. And balanceofseven.com for some of these other things that she's talking about. Dorothy, as you edit writers' novels or short stories, what are some of the most common problems that you see? Um, So some big things, some of the bigger picture things um, is, you know, the general uh, show me, don't tell me uh, comes to mind. Mm -hmm. Um, You'll have a lot of, you'll have a lot of time you'll have where people will be like, this person is, has done this in their lifetime. They, they are this, they, um, they feel that, or well, maybe not so much the feel, but it's it's nice to see the thing through their actions, um, see through their phys- if if you're doing it from that person's perspective, show what their physical feelings are to kind of show that what how their emotions manifest kind of thing, instead of just telling us what they what they're doing or what they're feeling or things like that. Um, God, I'm trying to think of stuff. <laughs> Well, so I, you know, know I find new stuff that come up. Well, how? Well, I want to comment on the show. Don't tell. I teach journalism at a local university, and that is so huge in journalism too, because you've got to be factual, and you've got to your observations or everything has to be attributed. So you can't. Mm-hmm. You have to show the actual results. You have to show yeah. what you're seeing, not. What, how it makes you feel, yeah. So and, I'm, and, and I'm giving you a big that, high five. <laughs> speaking of that, yeah. that actually that actually ties into another er- big error that I see a lot, and I've I've actually addressed this with several several of the authors whose stuff I've edited. Um, there there's a lot of a big error is what I call head hopping, um, knowing what perspective you're trying to tell a story from and sticking with that perspective. Uh, it's it's. It's not a bad thing to tell a story from multiple people's perspectives, but 
in a single scene, you want to be able to see the scene from one person's perspective a lot of the time. Um, it's done. It's been done in the past where, where um, omniscient is can be anybody from at one at any one time, and it can be really confusing. And I think these days mm-hmm. omniscient has kind of been more defined as as omniscient is multiple people in one story. Uh, unfortunately, in one scene can be really confusing. You don't that know is great advice. Yeah, telling the story there. Yeah. What about just some routine grammar, spelling, punctuation errors? Do you see some some recurring themes among those? Uh, quite, uh, there's some. Unfortunately, going into detail on them is a bit difficult because of just how much that would it would take. Um, dialogue, uh, the 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 actual punctuation around and capitalization around dialogue is a big one I see. Um, where if people have a dialogue tag after the uh, qu- after the actual quote, they period and capitalize the dialogue tag when it's supposed to be comma followed by a lowercase dialogue tag. But that's just that's part of the nitty gritty. <laughs> do you do much marketing on social media? I do. Um, I have both Facebook and Twitter that I do. Uh, actually, with the Twitter, I do both author and uh, my editing. Great. And I'm betting that when people hear you have a small press, they want to send you their stuff so that you might publish it. What what kind of things are you looking for, or are you looking for anything? Um, at this point, we're still kind of small. Like I said, we're our uh, mostly what we've what Balance of Seven has actually published is my books. And so we're doing our first thing that's not mine specifically that we're doing is this anthology that we're coming out with. Um, we're actually trying to do um, uh, two, two annual anthologies. Um, and so we're having this romance one that's coming out at the end of July, Rogues and Wildfire. Um, and then at the end, in November, we're expecting to come out with uh, one that's a themed of Winter Whimsy. And we're going to try and continue that. So we'll probably open up calls for those uh, uh, later on. And where do you put your calls out? Um, How do people know to right, submit something? Well, right, like right now, it's kind of lo- uh, kind of uh, a local uh, calling. Um, once we get once we get more. Uh, stabilized in it, we'll start. We're, we're gonna, we'll start going into larger things of putting the calls out on our website and Facebook, and um, uh, reaching out to uh, more things like Duotrope and stuff like that. But until, like I said, we're 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 still kind of small. But I'm the only person who's doing the reading, so <laughs> it's trying to find trying to find time for that on top of everything else. Yeah, I'd say that's kind of small. <laughs> But Dorothy, I have to hand it to you. You're you're doing so much, and you're still, you know, officially an author. So that's exciting. How did you find out about some of the organizations like Texas Authors and some of the other places that you network with? So my first my first encounter was Houston Writers Guild. I used to live in Houston. Um, I lived there for about seven years, I think now, um, before I moved back up to Dallas. Um, and when I first published, I was not connected to any writer's community. And that, that's another tip I'll, I'll give. Before you try and publish, connect with a writing community. Find your way to, to somewhere where you can get feedback from other writers, where you can get tips on how to do it, because I've had a very long journey that was kind of messy along the way. And it, it would have been a lot easier if I had had, uh, like the Houston Writers Guild was my first one, if I'd had the the classes that they offer and the and the critique groups that they offer when I was first doing my original book. Um, but then so through the Houston I hear writers, you saying, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go no, ahead. Go on. Oh, well, I was so gonna say, what I the hear Houston you writers say. School. <laughs> <laughs> hey, live radio, right? Um, yep, yep. Okay. So. You're saying that your writing improved when you found your community. Is oh, yeah. that fair to say? Uh, oh yeah, that's definitely fair. I like I said, long messy journey is what my 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 
books have been, and I've actually got second editions out of all my books now, so that might get, give you a hint of, of how much improvement has come along the way. That's very impressive, yes. <laughs> all right, now what else were you trying to say that I kept interrupting? Okay. Um, so through the Houston Writers Guild, I found out about other things like uh, Texas Authors, which is how I got here. Um, I found out about Tex Thompson, who uh, is a Dallas, uh, local, Dallas local author and um, very big um, – I'm missing the right word, but she basically helped coordinate all of the Dallas, Fort Worth area of the North Texas area um, writer communities into one uh, one website to access to be able to find out what's going on all across North Texas. Uh, that that and that's Word um, writer organizations around Dallas. Um, so and and so I. I, I like I like connecting with people, so I I find out about all sorts of different uh, communities and try and get involved, not just locally but like o- online as well. Um, I was actually part of uh, my I had poetry that was released actually in a uh, poetry anthology earlier this month uh, called Primal Elements, and that one was released by a small press called uh, Our Right Side OWS. So we've got mm-hmm. I, we've got communities all over the place. Well, Dorothy, you've given us such great advice. Connect with a writer community, show, don't tell, don't head hop. And, I, boy, thank you so much for being with us today. Dorothy Tinker, she writes, she copy edits, she does a lot. You can find her at Texas, no, wait, books.txauthors.com and probably on her website, balanceof7.com, too. Dorothy, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Until next time, write as much as you can, read as much as you can, and buy lots of books. Gatekeeper Press is a full-service publishing house and distribution aggregator that prides itself on offering the highest quality self-publishing services in the industry. Gatekeeper authors earn 100% of their proceeds, retain 100% of their rights, and work one-on-one with their own author manager who delivers a 100% author-centric hand-holding experience. In addition to working with individual authors, Gatekeeper Press works behind the scenes for publishers of all sizes and due to its efficiency and quality, also white labels its service to other self-publishing companies. Gatekeeper's Press' mission is to open the gates of the book publishing world by offering the highest quality services at affordable prices. To learn more or to read some of the testimonials, go to gatekeeperpress.com. Thank you for listening to Indie Beacon Radio, where creative souls can find help in marketing their creations. To learn more about Indie Beacon services, to be a guest on the show, or to advertise on our show, please visit our website at indiebeacon.com.